be focusing on largely. My guest is already here, Festo Mashira, who describes himself as a retro vintage stylist. Karibu sana to the program. Thank you. Tuanzia tu kwanza with that. Yes. What is retro vintage styling? Retro vintage is a style that uh, revived to the past. It is the, pa is the style that is relating to the past. The retro, the prefix retro is, uh, uh, it means backward, it means flashback. So it is anything old that appeals to the eyes, e.g. vintage fashion, pictures, styles, pieces, decor, and uh, a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So when you are doing retro, you are doing a lifestyle and art. So it's basically the old? It is old. Mm -hmm which executes art. All right. Yeah. All that e executes art. Yeah. When did you begin doing this? I began this when I was in high school. I used to participate in drama. So I was uh, fascinated with the way people were dancing and people were using their costumes to perform uh, folk songs. And so uh, I wanted to encounter this journey of uh, doing art. Mm -hmm. So the moment I left high school, I joined uh, Moi University. Mm. And in Moi University, I did literature where I encountered uh, writers, musicians. In the, uh, the four years that I was in uh, Moi University. So it is something that I have been living with. It is something that I am been dreaming of mm -hmm. yeah so is this like a business for you Ama, how do you do this style uh, this style uh, to me I can say it is a lifestyle mm -hmm. then again uh, I can do business with it so largely is it a business it is both, it's a both? yeah it is a lifestyle so do you have like a shop or do you like sell what is it exactly uh, in the case of retro, mm -hmm. I am the shop myself. Oh, yeah, okay. I am the dummy myself. Mm -hmm. I sell myself. Mm -hmm. So in the case of business, I sell silver and other things like gold, watches. So people are using uh, this figure, this retro, to engage me in business. Mm -hmm. So they want to see Festo so that they can buy from Festo. <laughs> yeah, so I use my name as a brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the business side of it, Ilianza, when exactly and how has it been, you know, just being in this uh, kind of fashion business? Because all the time, most times we talk about fashion, we always think about the clothing side of it. We rarely think about the jewelry part of it, which is what you're largely engaged into. Okay, I decided to do business because uh, I graduated as a teacher, but you know our system it is taking long to uh, absorb other teachers. So instead of waiting, I had to do something constructive. That's why I started uh, selling silver. Wh which year was this? Uh, it was uh, two years ago. Oh. Yeah, I started uh, selling silver. And uh, this business has grown. People are looking for me. People are engaging me on social media that they want to buy from me because I have sold uh, my silver items to big names here in Kenya, but also internationally, of which uh, it has made me to be known, not here in Kenya, but internationally. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Quite interesting. So the silver, is it silver and gold or just silver? It is silver. Strictly silver. Silver for and now, but, but the, gold. Mm -hmm. This is the chains, earrings, basically jewelry. Like this one. I can say this one. This one is a sample of silver items. This That's one, original? Yeah, this one is original. It has a number. The number is 925. What's that, the serial five. number? Those are the code. Oh, yeah. okay. 9254. That is for silver. But for gold, it's 950. That is for 21 carat, mm. and uh, for uh, 18 carat is uh, 750. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to identify a, a gold, mm -hmm. you first of all 
uh, look at the, the code. Then you look at the appearance. If you uh, touch a gold, it will attract you. Yeah, but silver, it is easy to identify because people have been putting on silver in Kenya and uh, people are not new to silver here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So you might identify uh, original silver and also you might identify a fake silver by just looking at it and also by the texture. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> First, of all, how do you do your clients believe? I mean, when you look at these items, particularly silver and gold, yes. there's so many fake of them in yes. the market. Sometimes, even for those that are in this business, it could be difficult for their clientele to believe that this is actually legit stuff that you're selling to them. Have you encountered such kind of clients? When I come here, I wait. Mm -mm. This might not just be the original item that you want to sell to me. Okay, that is a good question. Uh, you know, in any business, there must be competitors. Even when you are dealing, wh when you are dealing with uh, maybe, say, vehicles or uh, alcohol, you will find more competitors in the business. So I feel that uh, people who are bringing uh, counterfeit as uh, original uh, silver, they are right because they are in business. So we cannot deny, deny them a, a chance uh, to uh, do their business. Mm -hmm. But if you have a legit thing, people will come for you each and every time. All right. Yeah. What are your off peak? What, what are your peak seasons? Off peak, we have peak seasons and off peak seasons in business, in any kind of business, you know, and also largely fashion. Time gun is not longer peak, time gun is not longer off peaks, and what informs that? Okay, the good time uh, is the festival seasons. For example, Eid mm -hmm. and uh, Christmas Eve, they are the best. Uh, seasons for us to sell the silver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So mostly Christmas seasons, celebratory seasons. Those yeah, kind of peak people seasons. people want to dress. Uh. Yeah. So uh, those are the seasons that we we get good clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for for you, was it fashion? Is this something you had envisioned doing? Yes, you said you you did education. Yes. In school. Yes. But then. At the back of your mind, was fashion something you had envisioned doing and given another chance, would you still be in the fashion business? Fashion is a talent, mm -hmm. just like art. Art is a talent. It mm -hmm. is something that someone is born with. So even if, for example, mm -hmm. you are a news anchor and you have a talent in fashion, mm -hmm. you will come with it in this job. Yeah. yeah, so even me in business, I go with my fashion. Even in uh, school discourse. I go with my fashion. So I want to be identified as a stylish teacher. I want mm -hmm. to be identified as a stylish business personnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So fashion, it is something that is inborn. Mm -hmm. Then business, it is a skill as well as education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about marketing. I mean, in every business, there's that marketing aspect of it. Which is your best way of marketing your products, be it whether it's the, you know, the old, as you mentioned, the styling bit of it, the jewelry part of it, which is your style of marketing? My marketing, first of all, uh, uh, it is derived from uh, my stylish jewelry. Because uh, for me, jewel is just a fashion, mm. and then I take it uh, as a style, as a lifestyle. As I said earlier on, mm -hmm. that uh, when you are dealing with retro, you are dealing with lifestyle. Mm. So I had to uh, pick every item on the way. So the moment uh, I picked silver, people were coming for me. Mm. So I had to venture on. And you largely deal with silver jewelry items. Silver. Yeah. So even uh, for example, the last week. Uh, on the Nairobian Gazette, okay. I was featured as my stylish jewelry items keep customers 
coming. I saw that. Yeah. Saw that. So it is my style that is making people to come. So I have to stick with this style and I have, uh, and I have to be relevant mm. in this style so that people could come for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I use something. I use like a, maybe say a bait to catch the fish. So that's how you do This is marketing. a bait. Yeah. This is a bait that's because people will, will, will go for brand. Okay. They won't go for product. Right. So people are buying the brand. They are buying retro vintage. They are buying Chira. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So does how does social media play a part in your marketing, or is it referrals also part of what you know aids in your marketing for your product? When you are speaking about media, we are speaking about uh, visual art. For me, mm -hmm. I use uh, I use visual art, for example, to capture to appeal to the audience. Then the audience will see this person is using even silver in this visual art. Mm. So I want something like this. I want what this person is wearing. So I have to engage this person to tell me where he's getting this, this, uh, this silver. Mm. But fortunately enough, it is an, an advantage to me because I am the one who is selling the silver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, going by that, you know, head and that article, because I actually read it saying Thank that you. your stylist jewelry items keep customers coming. Thank you. What is so catchy about your items? I mean, you could get many people in the fashion space, and this is actually fashion dealing with jewelry, because fashion is broad. Yes. You understand? Yes. So, what exactly about your items keep customers coming? What is what makes tick about the way in which you do your business, the way in which you have have kept your items the way in which you treat your clients or customers so to speak okay items to me is diverse uh -huh. it is not only uh, silver it is also watches like this one this one is retro jewelry yeah jewelry uh, it is a jewelry yeah, yeah. and it also it is also my item so I have to market it well so I have to uh, assemble every pieces that looks like retro, retro, something that was, uh, uh, was in the past. So I have to pick everything on the way that uh, was in the past mm -hmm. in order to bring it to the limelight. Then people will see, because people have been looking for these uh, items, mm -hmm. they will engage me later, maybe on social media, when they read about uh, the, news, uh, the newspapers that have been featured, mm -hmm. they will come to me. And you brought all of them here, the ones yes, that I want to sell, you. I want to sell myself. Today is, is the best day for me because I've never done uh, a retro vintage uh, interview. I've been doing just normal interviews. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. but this one is a retro vintage interview integrated with, uh, with uh, business, mm. yeah. All right, now, fashion is one of those things, whichever way you want to look at it, and like, as I mentioned earlier, fashion is broad. Yes. You know, for what you, you largely deal with is the jewelry aspect of it, and you've talked about the items in which you deal with. But then again, how do you keep up with the trends? I mean, trends keep emerging day in, day out. There's always something new in the market. As someone who is into fashion jewelry, how do you keep up with that? Uh, first of all, uh, retro vintage is timeless. It will never go out of the market. Every time people want to listen about the old school music, uh -huh. they want to see the old fashion. They want to see the old vibe. Again, retro vintage is unique. Uh -huh. Because uh, when you see a retro car, uh, you will stare at it for a long time, unlike a Toyota V8 car, because it is normal. Mm. But this one is standing out as the only one. So that thing of loneliness is the one that makes me going. Again, uh, retro vintage is, no, uh, it is a nostalgic experience. People will want to explore in this uh, thing, maybe, uh, for example, you have done your shirt like this. To me, I see it as a retro vintage. I can put on a shirt like this only to capture the attention of the people. So I want to explore this in order to bring the people uh, on board. Mm -hmm. Again, retro vintage is easy to afford. You cannot walk from here 
going to downtown without meeting a vintage shirt which is sold at a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. So people go for cheap things. Mm -hmm. That's why retro vintage will still be timeless and it will still stand out forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for you, it's basically what makes um, this kind of jewelry unique. That's how you also keep up with the trends in, you know, in the market when it comes to fashion jewelry. Uh, uniqueness, uh, when I was doing my course uh, in, in the university, uh, I was taught about uh, literature and uh, postmodernism. Mm -hmm. That is about creating an image. So if you create the image, people will judge you by your image. They will look at you and judge you by just seeing you. Mm. So if you create your image perfectly as a stylish, mm -hmm. then people will look for you. Those who want to be stylish, uh, to be a stylist, will look for, for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, you also talked about affordability, cheapness, expensive in terms of items. Let's talk about pricing of items. How do you go about pricing items? Because again, you're not just into fashion styling, but you're also, also into, into business. business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, my items, for example, silver. Uh, silver, uh, new silver goes for 250 Kenya shillings, one gram. So, for example, this one is 30 grams. Mm -hmm. If you multiply by 250, it gives you 7,500. Mm. So, we do a uh, weigh on the scale before we sell to the customers. Mm -hmm. So, we use the uh, weighing scale yeah. to sell our items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Now, in terms of keeping up with the market, you also talked about, and I read your ad, the article there, particularly on this uh, daily, this should be what, the Nairobian? This one is the Nairobian. Yeah, you talked about the fact that rise, you know, competition is yeah. one of those challenges. And yes, I'm thinking yes. in every business, yes. competition should be one of those things that need not to be a challenge. In any way, it needs to be something that allows you to think broader, to be more creative. So maybe you can just talk to us a bit about that. How does this pose a challenge? And this is also particularly for those doing this kind of business, given the fact that people are really venturing into fashion, and it could be any form of fashion. How does uh, you know, competition pose a challenge for a business person, particularly those into fashion? Competition creates fear. And uh, if you are afraid, you will not move on with your business. Mm -hmm. So uh, I welcome competitions mm. in my life. So this uh, competition will make me to uh, move and stand strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, when these competitors come with their things, I also have uh, my own uh, my own way of doing my things. Mm. So I also have my own way of selling my silver. I also have uh, maybe a mode of keeping up with the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can say that competition does not pose a challenge to you. It actually Compe makes Competition is not a challenge to me. It makes you become more creative. Yeah, it makes me to think Mm -hmm. Each and every time, it is not a challenge and, at all. And it's not a challenge. It is not so a challenge. So you said something different from what you're saying. It is, it is a challenge, article. but it is not uh, uh, making me Let's to fear. Let's say it is a positive challenge. It is a positive. Every business yeah. needs to but have But the, 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 uh, the worst challenge is uh, insecurity. Mm. You know about uh, uh, people are being uh, looked uh, down upon uh, when you are putting on silver, they think that you are a thug. Uh, maybe uh, you have uh, lost focus. You are now uh, coming. Uh, maybe you, you, you are in a bad company. So mm. that is the, the worst challenge to me. 
All right. Yeah. So as we wind down first with this conversation, I would just like you to speak to someone who really wants to get into this kind of business, fashion business, as we said, and particularly jewelry, since that's what you largely deal deal with. As we said, like this is a business where you'd get particularly good number of young people getting into its fashion. It could be dressing, it could be jewelry, it could be styling, whichever form of fashion there is. What do they need to know when they get in this kind of space? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, they should know uh, uh, their purpose on the earth uh, because uh, some people want to come into this business but they are not ready. But uh, when they go to other businesses, uh, they, be, uh, they become successful. Mm -hmm. So if you choose to become uh, a silver dealer, you have to be strong because uh, there are people who have been there in the business and uh, there are people who will still come to the business. So you have to focus. You have to put your energy in this and you also have to pray mm. so that the Lord uh, could open the doors for you. Good place to end it. Focus, pray, and know why you're getting into, this, into that kind of business. I mean, purpose at the end of the day is what makes it key. Yeah. Isn't it? Thanks. All right, so I have been speaking to Festo Machira, who is a retro vintage stylist, largely deals with fashion and jewelry. That's why you really had him talk about silver, oftentimes this conversation. But this is where we end this first conversation of today. We still have plenty more after this break. Stick with us.